Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the PEMCO part number 252X226B FGP threshold. That's a lot of part number. We're going to dissect it. So first of all, let's take a look at what this is. This is a threshold, as you can see. This is a thermal break threshold. Thermal break means that the transmission of or energy from either side, probably from this side to this side, right, is going to be severely retarded by the fact that uh, it's not going to be able to really hop through this disparate material, this hard thermoplastic, into the interior portion. Assuming that the doors swing out, they might swing in. I don't know. I would normally see a bump up style threshold like this, or it's called a panic threshold, or it's called a latch track threshold. Um, and a thermal break. It's certainly a thermal break, but it can be called panic, bump up, latch track, and we'll define those in a moment, um, sort of threshold. So this is a confluence of a lot of, um, a lot of stuff that's happening. First of all, the most defining characteristic of this threshold, and this piece of 42-inch threshold that I have right here, it weighs about 9.5 pounds. This is solid architectural bronze is what this is. Some people call it brass. Um, that's fine by me. I believe the proper industry terminology is architectural bronze, which is a reference to a specific alloy of which there are probably dozens of bronze alloy, bronze and brass alloys that are available. But this particular alloy uh, by Pemco is known to be appropriate for door hardware use and certainly thresholds. This piece of threshold is incredibly expensive, uh, incredibly durable, incredibly heavy. Expensive, yes. Uh, you know, you're looking at something that's a hundred plus dollars a foot. This is well more than a hundred dollars a foot. A foot, one foot of this. Um, incredibly durable. Bronze thresholds like this, I have seen uh, operating flawlessly like the day they were put in, that are decades old, several decades old, a hundred years old, I've seen solid bronze thresholds. Incredibly heavy, yes. 2.26 pounds per inch. One inch of this weighs 0.22, almost 2.3 pounds. Okay. 0.23 is almost a quarter pound. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's really, really heavy. Um, where would you use such an animal? Well, lots of places where it makes a lot of sense. Just to, you know, to call it what it is. If you're building a $5 million house, you are not putting a $30 aluminum threshold on it. That's the bottom line. You might be using a threshold like this because the base material is in proportion or in alignment with the caliber of the construction throughout the rest of the space. That's just the bottom line. You might have an application like a high-end hotel on the Gulf Coast of Florida where it takes outrageous amounts of volume through the opening. The building has been standing for several decades. The installation of thresholds like this is intended to last several decades. The durability of this material is beyond discussion. Simply stated, there's no way that anything made of aluminum will compare with something made of solid brass. A lot of people call them solid brass. I'm going to call it architectural bronze. I believe that to be the industry proper term, but solid, call it solid brass. Um, this material is the first scenario. Really expensive home. You know, are, are you going to put an aluminum threshold on the front of a $3 million house? Probably not. Um, and that's just the bottom line. That's just where this is going. This job not only has 242 inch, it has seven six footers, two five footers, three seven footers, four 10 foot pieces. Lots of doors on this home. I happen to know that it's going to Europe and um, will be exquisite when it's done. So what it is, where you'll use it, durability. Uh, proportionality would be the other area or you just got a lot of money
and you want the best one. Uh, not that this is necessarily the best one, because it may not be the best one. Why is that the case? I have sold architectural bronze or solid brass to people in the past, and what you're seeing here, and would you not agree that that is a streaky finish that looks somewhat dirty? Those might be my fingerprints on there. This is what's called mill finish. This is what the material looks like when it's extruded at the mill. There are people who want mill, they specify mill. Why is that the case? Because they want the architectural bronze to patina with the exposure to its local environment. Not, it would be improper to say that it would rust. Steel would rust, meaning it would change with exposure to its environment, as would architectural bronze, as does copper, as does aluminum, stainless steel, everything. Someone will order mill specifically when they want it unfinished because they want it to look maybe old world. Uh, this home that's in Europe, I can only, and this is certainly a country that has been <laughs> important for several millennia. Um, they might be building something that they want it to look old world. This is going to turn colors with exposure to the environment that is going to make it look old. However, it's going to last decades, maybe centuries. Um, I've sold mill to people and they've called me up and said, this thing is used. What do you mean it's used? It's used. I'm telling you it's used. Send me pictures. And I'm all, I already know where this is going. So when people say it's used, they've ordered mill finish. And what they don't realize because of a lack of an understanding of the term, it's unfinished. That's what mill means. Um, and after we work through that, um, there's either an understanding that what they've ordered is mill, or there's a refusal to understand that mill is unfinished. Or in one case, we've sent the material back to the factory and charged the upcharge to make it a satin finish. So onto mill, you can do different finishes. Pemco can do, certainly they can do mill, obviously. They could do a 606, which would be a satin brass finish. They can do a 605, 605 polished brass finish. This, would be, this can be made so highly reflective that you'll see yourself in it. They can do a 612 satin bronze. They have a process by which when they take this bronze material, it's going to look like 612 satin bronze. They can do 613 oil rubbed bronze. They can make this all oil rubbed, true oil rubbed bronze. Because it's solid architectural bronze, technically anything can be done to it. You want to powder coat it? They can do that. I mean, I can't, I'm not saying Pemco can do it, but, but this can be plated. It can be powder coated. If you're going to do some sort of exotic process to it after the fact, you're definitely going to want to separate anything that's going to melt like this and this. And you're going to want to insulate, maybe inject silicone into that raceway. I know that people that do powder coating have silicone that they can protect the areas that are not to take any paint. You're not going to want to powder coat this raceway and then try to fit all this back together. So because of the caliber of what it is, you can really do anything to it, okay? including those finishes that Pemco can directly supply. Um, now, where are you going to use this? I always see bump up style thresholds and exterior uh, openings that swing out. And that doesn't mean that yours has to be an outswing application, but generally that's where you're going to see this in an outswing application. Now, if I was using this, and the reason you're going to see it in an outswing installation is going to be... I think people just classify a bump up. Door comes and it bumps up to the material. I think they classify it as something that they expect to swing out. The problem with it swinging out is where's your line of defense? Out here where the door is or inside the opening? It's inside the opening. Using this as a outswing, I would certainly still add a threshold. Pardon me, I would certainly still add a door sweep. I'd have my belts and my, my belt and my suspenders is what I would have. This is money in the bank. Now, so outswing is where you'll see a bump up generally. And maybe that's because a lot of commercial work that we are primarily involved in um, are going to be exterior steel doors and frames that swing out, exit devices, okay? They want a bump-up style threshold, and this would certainly work. This won't be handicap compliant, um, but lots of applications that are commercial in nature won't be required 
to be handicap compliant, like the back service door of a strip mall. So I had mentioned bump up, and you can get the idea of why. Door comes and closes up against the insert. I also said panic, and I also said latch track. The feature of this interior portion would work out sublimely for the for acting as the strike plate from a surface vertical rod exit device. I don't think you're going to have solid, well, no, you certainly could, bronze or aluminum, but you could have a pair of aluminum, pardon me, you could have a pair of hollow metal doors on the back of a big box store, and you might have three pair of them because the occupancy calculation says you need so many inches of emergency exit door, and there's a formula for What's the occupancy load? How many, how, much, how many doors you have to have with exit device hardware? Well, this would be really elegant for that because the surface vertical rod latches will communicate right to the bottom of this profile. They call it a latch track or a panic threshold. If someone uses those terms, they mean a bump up threshold or they mean a panic threshold like this. Now, this is a thermal brake. That, as I said earlier, that's going to significantly reduce the transmission of cold from outside to inside i have personally witnessed la uh, bump i have personally witnessed thermal brake thresholds in action i was at a job site many years ago chicago 16 degrees out it's a tuesday at 4 i'm still on the job keying locks january early january so it's dark basically already and I had gotten to the end of the job, I had 100 cylinders to key or whatever it was, got to the end of the run and said, oh, let me go by and see those thermal brake frames and weather strip that I had supplied. Went over and checked it out. I, the room, the ambient temperature on the inside may have been set to 72 degrees. And I kid you not that I reached, I opened the door. This was all covered in snow and ice. I kid you not, I reached out and touched the threshold, and this was practically room temperature. This was snow and ice covered. Um, the, so that was the wake-up call as to why they're so effective. I have to get this off my shoulder. They're so effective, and I've seen it firsthand. The other advantage, whether it's super cold or super hot, you have these disparate temperatures, but you have disparate humidity levels. So here in southern Florida, what do you have outside? 99.9% .9 humidity. Well, on the inside, you've got air conditioning, and that's tempering that down a bit. So you're going to have the buildup of condensation on the inside of your space. And you really don't want water collecting on the face of your threshold. That thermal break is going to help retard that as well. Um, so it's very effective in that regard. Now, I said that we would dissect the part number. Let's take a closer look at... Uh, doing that. If you have thought to yourself that, gosh, that seems like a modular type of construction, that's because it is. This is a piece. This is a piece. That thermal plastic in there is a different piece. The pile is a different piece. Now, we're going to talk about the inserts as well after we define the part numbers. So, the X in the part number is this by the, is this part number by this part number. So, let's take a look. Okay, a 252 a 252 that 252 portion of the part number is going to be the leading edge. So, a 252 a 252 by Pemco, if you can order a 252, it's literally just this part that is a two inch wide half saddle threshold, okay? It's gonna have that raceway profile in it regardless. So obviously the back end of this is gonna be their 226 part number and I wanna, I'm looking at the catalog and performing a find function to get to that page in the website. A 226, So that a 226 is not available as a standalone product that I can see. Yeah, the 226 is used. Could you buy only this portion if you wanted to? Yeah, you could. You might be doing something really odd with it. Um, 
but you could. Um, I do recall that I've done a job where we used a portion like this because the client had a really irregular floor surface out here. Um, and we were, uh, and that's what it was. We took this piece and then we ran, ran a half inch, a six inch wide ramp, six inch, half to zero, and we butted it right up to the face of this and that permitted it to ramp down and that's just what worked for the client. So this is the 226 in the part number. The X is just 252 by 226. Now the B, that means architectural bronze, it means brass, architectural bronze. The BFG, uh, the FGP is basically all going to be a reference to the fact that it's thermal break and then the P in the part number stands for pile. It is a soft pile material. It's not bristle. Pile is softer uh, than bristle. Some people call it horsehair or, or hor yeah, horsehair, mohair, I hear it referred to. You can get this with different inserts is the bottom line. And those inserts for this can be a T for thermoplastic. Uh, a T is going to be a thermoplastic elastomer is what it's going to be. I think that's what they call it. Uh, thermo, forgive me, it's thermoseal. Um, it's going to be a fairly dense, a fairly rigid piece of somewhat inflexible uh, synthetic plastic. You can also get this with a V for vinyl. I couldn't imagine ordering a threshold like this than putting vinyl. You can get it with pile. And that appears to be the only options. So you have pile, vinyl, the neoprene sort of knockoff. Three options. Bottom line is this. Vinyl is only when economy is the most expensive thing. I, don't, I couldn't imagine ordering this in vinyl. Vinyl is going to fatigue and fail with exposure to extreme temperature and ultraviolet. Here in southern Florida, if there, is, if there are photons, meaning if there's light, there's ultraviolet. Um, pile, I think, is exceptional because when you have a door and that door closes across the entire length, very low resistance to compression. It will compress nice, but then still fill the, fa the surface area of what is, it's making contact with. I have been told that insects, critters, they don't like pile. They don't like to land on it. They don't like to touch it. So you're going to see bristle used very often as door sweeps for restaurant applications for that very purpose. So pile is really good. You might have a weird condition on the jam at one end where you've got to severely compress one end of the door and then it's got to stick out its reasonable amount to just get a seal across the door. Then the thermoplastic I think would be really good if you know you're going to receive direct water. So if this was an in-swing and you know water is going to hit this, well, I would do two things. I would use the T version, the thermoplastic, and I would put a drip cap on the outside. I'd want to drive that water off away. I'd get a 916 projection drip cap from Pemco, and I would put that outside is what I would do to help get that water off. Um, those are the different inserts available for this. Now, in terms of the length, you can order this in any length that you want. This job had, they weren't 10 foot, they were 10 foot six, in fact. Um, their stock extrusions are probably in the 16 foot range. You can order any length you want, and I would encourage you to do so. Don't buy more than you need because it's 100 plus dollars a foot. This is $125 currently a foot. Um, order it. If you have need for a custom length, let us know. Order the next longest piece or pieces and indicate in the comment field the net length you'd like for us to cut the material back to, and that's how we'll ship it. Not that it matters so much on mill finish. However, you may not have a tool. You may not have the tool, and you may not have the desire to cut this. Pemco's got a pretty good, you know, finished edge on this. You can see the bandsaw marks. I expect they're using a bandsaw. Um, but you can order the size, and they're gonna, they're gonna endeavor to get it right. Why you would want to order a custom length pre-cut is I would expect like on bronze door sweeps or bronze gasketing that the ends are going to be finished as well. If you're going to be ordering this architectural bronze in an oil rubbed finish or a polished brass finish 
I'm going to want you to order it the net length you want, if possible, and then indicate the cut ends are to be finished as well. I would not want to see when oil rubbed is a 40% increase over mill finish. I don't want to see unfinished ends and specify that. And that's what we want the manufacturer to do. Order the next longest piece or pieces and indicate in the comment field. That'll not only get you the material cut to length, but the countersink at, the, at a good distance from the edge, a proper center to center as well. Okay. Speaking of those holes, screws are included in a solid brass base material, as you can see. Let's make sure. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, they're definitely solid brass. You're going to want to be really mindful of drilling holes with anchors. I would not use those number 10 um, wood screws made of brass uh, necessarily. I might look for ways to use a lead expansion anchor. I might look for ways to um, use a material that's more durable than brass when it comes to screws. Think that through. Let's plan it together. This is all ordered as drilled and screws supplied. You might say, no, 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 send me the screws, but don't drill any holes. I want to drill them myself because I have to strategically locate them. I've done jobs of, you know, 10 foot long thresholds that were literally 10 foot solid bronze. And the client said, no, 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 no. And I think actually that job, there may have been nine pieces of that. It's a lot of work to drill all those holes, but you're going to get it exactly where you need it to be. Uh, so that can be accommodated as well, as well. It all needs to be indicated at the um, at the time of order. So you get past seven foot, and that's when the sh cost to ship is is going to get expensive. It's going to get noticeable. However, if you're buying material that's meant to last a century or longer, the cost to ship it will probably be somewhat insignificant. Finally, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page. You know what? I'm sorry. I didn't throw the tape measure on this. Half inch is the height. Okay. It's going to be four and an eighth inch wide. That's because you got two two inch pieces here, but that thermal plastic is going to gobble up an eighth of an inch. Yeah, four and an eighth. Seven eighths is the height over here, and that's pretty common for a bump up threshold. Okay. That piece is two inch on the outside. That's going to leave you with two inch on the inside. Finally, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the PEMCO products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Thresholds like this need to be thought through, need to be thought out. It's not returnable. You don't want to get it wrong. You can't probably afford to buy more of it. Let's work together to make sure that we get the right confluence of length, finish, preparations, anchoring so that your job goes flawlessly. If you have any questions on the Pemco 252 by 226 and a solid bronze thermal, solid architectural bronze base material, thermal break with a pile or any other Pemco product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.